Welcome back to the show. Ever since the great ass whooping of 2010, Democrats have consoled themselves with a prophecy whispered by their soothsayers. The Republican Party as we know it is dying. Traditionally, Republican states like Texas now turning purple. Will Texas politically shift from red to purple sooner rather than later? Oh, please. If Texas looks purple, it's only because the beating doled out by Republicans left a giant bruise. <laughs> If the tragedy mill that was 2016 taught us anything, it's that the world is getting sadly less purple. Yet, the fantasy persists. Georgia has also typically been a red state, but its changing demographics are moving that state in a purple direction. It is a traditionally red state, but it's slowly turning purple. Up next is Georgia about to turn blue. Don't hold your breath, liberals. You'll turn blue before Georgia does, because while progressives work on their vision boards and wait for babies of color to grow up and save them, Republicans are out there winning state elections, then immediately changing the laws to make sure they keep winning, just in case Democrats do decide to vote next time around. Speaking of elections in Georgia, Republican majority state Senate is set to vote on a bill passed by the House that would redraw nine of their districts in an effort to protect their majority. The changes would reduce the number of people of color in districts where these Democratic leaning voters have threatened to oust Republican incumbents. Republicans swear they're not trying to marginalize the black vote, but the shapes of the new districts are kind of a tip off. <laughs> The sponsor of that redistricting bill is the congressman from Georgia's 131st, Johnny Caldwell. Before we meet him, can we all pledge not to say anything that perpetuates negative stereotypes about rural Southerners? Well, let's talk about some of the things this bill does and some of the things that this bill does not does. God damn it, Johnny! What does it just tells you not to does? Now, before he took up racial cartography, Johnny Caldwell was a judge. What kind of judge was he? We asked some people who'd been in his courtroom. My name is Karen Wilkes. I'm a public defender in Georgia. Karen was assigned to defend a young black man who had spent six years in jail because Johnny's britches were bunching up on him the day he showed up in court. Johnny Caldwell committed one of the worst violations you could possibly commit as a judge. He denied him his right to a lawyer, the most fundamental of rights. When he finally got the lawyer that the Sixth Amendment guarantees him, he was found not guilty in 45 minutes. Yet he spent six years in prison fighting for that one day and 45 minutes to be exonerated because Johnny Caldwell stuck him there. As anyone who watches The Walking Dead knows, Georgia can be a tough place for black guys. <laughs> Oddly enough, that is not what got Judge Johnny in trouble. This is. There were other re remarks that I heard on a voicemail that Judge Caldwell said to my attorney, Susan Brown, um, and there were voicemails that were left, and they were very inappropriate and um, made very um, sexual advances to her. He leaned in to give me a hug and crammed his tongue in my mouth. If I wanted an order signed in my favor, I needed to come to his office and take down my pants and at least let him look at it if I wasn't going to let him touch it. Some of the sexual comments in this transcript are so graphic we can't repeat them on television. We can! <laughs> Attorney testified that, quote, he told me to wear my pants a little bit tighter in court so he could read my lips while arguing. Ugh, judge, didn't your school teach sex ed? We don't speak from our vaginas, we speak from our boobs. And sometimes our boobs pick up the phone and call the judicial watchdog group. Former Georgia judge Johnny Caldwell was frowned upon by the JQC after being accused of sexual misconduct. Judge Caldwell abruptly stepped down, writing in his resignation letter to the governor that he wanted to spend more time with his grandchildren and promising to the Judicial Qualifications Commission investigator that he would never run for judge again. First of all, I want to spend more time with my grandchildren is politician for I'm guilty as shit. No grown ass man is trying to quit his job to play Lego. Johnny was publicly disgraced and had to hide away in shame. Instead, he ran for higher office from the courthouse to the state house. Oh, right. I forgot we're 
where we lived for a second. Now look, I can see rewarding a gropey perv with higher office once. I mean, that's just normal. But how the hell did the labia whisperer win three consecutive elections? Was he running against Charles Manson and Jerry Sandusky? Representative Caldwell is running unopposed for re-election. God damn it, Georgia! You can't find one lady in Thomaston with a pussy hat and a law degree who wants to take the attorney liquor down? Come on! What about you, Republicans? I know Thomaston is full of honorable conservatives who don't think women's breasts are a convenient armrest. Oh, hey! That's my mammogram face, too! Now, in fairness, the voters of Johnny's district may keep sending him to Atlanta just so they don't have to worry about him roaming their streets at night. But it would be nice if they had a choice. Johnny Elbow Tits is so sure that no one's ever gonna pry his ass out of his congressional seat, he feels comfortable using a recorded phone line to offer favors to other serial sexual harassers. A 300-page internal affairs investigation concluding Captain David Gibson sexually harassed and assaulted several women inside the sheriff's office for years. Johnny Caldwell and Thomas in Georgia I'm trying to figure out a way to help to see if we can stop this thing. You're not going to owe me a dime. I'm trying to help the department and help these folks. Oh, what a mensch. As they say in the South, beau regards before ho regards. <laughs> but Johnny's not alone, except on the ballot. In Georgia's last election, over 80% of candidates ran unopposed. Out of the 165 incumbents running for re-election, know how many lost? Three! And none of them was the guy who asked to see a pussy in court. So Georgia, what the fuck? Look, I might be an out of touch, matcha latte drinking, beard sporting New Yorker, but I think Georgians would agree with me that Johnny Caldwell Jr. is a total creep who shouldn't be making laws. And perhaps one of them would like to challenge him in a primary because I refuse to believe that Georgia's 131st contains more people who've been sexually harassed by Caldwell than people willing to run against him. We'll be right back.